the Bible specifically says Haman was so angered, he wanted to, quote unquote, lay hands on Mordecai. And let me tell you something. hope you guys have been doing well um we are gonna be doing a makeup look of course because you see these you know this face is not these and uh these eyebrows are the only things that are done but that's just to cut down time so we are going to be using this new eyeshadow palette today this is from cake face and if you don't know who this is you have been living under a rock okay let's be clear or I mean, I don't know, but this is Time, the infamous um, beauty or cosmetic company. And you guys, I'm so excited to share this with you guys. I've been a fan of hers for so long. I watched some of her videos back when she lived in Denver. And if you guys don't know, Colorado, I mean, that is my home, not town. I'm from Colorado Springs, but I did live in Denver and Aurora. So to find a beauty influencer that was in my city, I felt like that was amazing. Um, but you know, now she lives in Vegas and she has been doing some really innovative things. I've always loved her because I feel like she was really ahead of the times for a lot of things, popping color, popping different color hair before it was okay. But back when, you know, they would have said it was ghetto or back when it wasn't professional and all of that. So y'all, uh, it was my whole vibe and everything back then. If y'all don't know, I used to wear pink hair back in the day. I got in trouble for it at work, red hair, red wigs. And so, um, I, time if you ever get a chance to watch this i'm so excited that you've come out with this and i'm so excited i know there's so much more to come i can't wait to see your lips uh your lip collection because i know they're gonna be popping um i remember watching videos of you when you were like mixing everything to be able to um create the looks that you know little girls like us could even couldn't even dream about at that time or we were dreaming about but it just wasn't uh main stage i guess it was so i'm so excited for you i'm so proud of you i know that um this has to be something that's so beautiful and um amazing to do and something i aspire to do one day so you're encouraging me and um letting me know that it definitely not only can happen but it will happen and um i just want to tell you that i love everything you do and keep moving so um i love this packaging let's go ahead and get into this box right y'all so i am so happy that she the first thing that she did okay so this is what it looks like and i'm in love stay caked up okay and if you haven't follow her on um i think her um instagram handle is our name is uh, Tom the Infamous, but uh, you can follow at Cake Face too, Cake Face uh, Cosmetics as well. Um, so this is what it looks like, and I love this. This is so soft and so beautiful, y'all. Excuse the fact that I don't have no nails on. I'm kind of taking a break right now. So look at that, y'all. It's so beautiful. Um, I'm glad that it came like this. I'm glad that it wasn't just PR packaging because for um, me, you know, I don't get any, well, I'm not gonna say any, but you know, sometimes I don't get big company um, PR packaging. So I was happy that I could, you know, purchase this and get the PR uh, packaging for it. Um, so I think this is actually limited for you to get this. I think after these boxes are gone, and forgive me if I'm incorrect, um, you may just get the palette. So look at how cute this palette is, y'all. All right, and so completely just in a beautiful, um, like satin silk uh, pillow cushion. I love it. All right, so this is what the packaging looks like, and this is so dope. I remember the t-shirts that had this, the Tims, y'all. Love it, love it, love it. All right, and I remember back when her, uh, she had her cake face, I think it was a clothing line, and um, 
y'all at that time i was going to school and was broke back in the day and really was just trying to like find my footing so i didn't get a chance to get anything back in the day because it just wasn't in my means to do it but now you know god is good and he done turned things around and use it for the better so your girl in overflow now so I, i'm so excited to be able to um purchase this eyeshadow palette so let's go ahead and open it up All right, so this is what it looks like. I like that it's matte on this uh, instead of super high gloss or super cute. This is a uh, vegan and cruelty free. All right, let me make sure. So there's a mirror in here, but I don't want to uh, blind. Oh, okay. It actually will be okay. If, no, because I'm going to show you the background. All right, so this is what the colors look like. Hey, y'all I'm so excited I was watching her do the swatches and I was so happy so I was like dang um I'm so excited to see it yo these right here just I just I love this color right here I don't know if you remember when she did this buttercup like uh peanut butter um like uh this beautiful brown with like um a burnt orange and I was in love with that I want to say that that is one of my favorite looks that she's ever done and so that kind of this color reminds me of the color that she actually used in that video and I can't tell y'all how many times I've recreated that look so yeah I'm so excited all right so enough about this palette let me tell y'all what we're gonna be doing today so um of course I've been like feeling like I know y'all have noticed that I haven't done like a whole lot of beauty videos and it's because I kind of felt like something was missing I wanted to do more than just I don't want to I don't really like doing voiceovers and I felt like me just kind of filling up the air while I do my makeup or even just talking to you guys about products it kind of felt like mm, I don't know and I didn't know how it was how you guys felt about it either so I wanted to start this new series and not even just me I knew I wanted to start a series but God really put it on my heart to do bible stories so y'all I am so excited for this series because y'all I have been in my studies and God has been working on me and growing me and you know just increasing the love you know I love God and um I try to put that in everything that I do and I love to share and talk about the Bible I love to share what I feel like God where God has me and where he's taking me so yeah we're about to do that and today's story is about to be about Esther okay so I don't know if y'all know this story but your girl Esther okay is a wonderful woman and um a woman that embodies a whole lot of uh, strength especially uh in her time so there was the king and i think his name was arias at let me be sure his name was the hazardous so um this king i mean he was a major king you guys like not just oh he's over his house and his family and you know probably owns a few things no this guy was old this king was over i think it was 127 providences which stretched from india all the way to uh, ethiopia y'all know how big that is to rule that much amount of land and people in different houses so needless to say he had a lot of kings that were actually um like underneath him and he was just like the top king so this king was actually having you could say a party uh or a banquet or whether to say i'm not 100 percent sure what they called him back then but yeah so he was having a banquet and this king he had several wives already so he had um one particular wife that was actually his favorite and he made her she was the queen and her name was i think it was Venetia. Uh, and when they say that this woman was beautiful, they said that she was very beautiful. Um, and so much so to where throughout the party, during the party, um, initially she wasn't actually down, uh, in engaging in the party or anything like that. She was uh, up in her room, basically. Now, mind you, this is an elegant room because she in a big mansion, you know what I'm saying? A castle. So, yeah, you know, she is 
in her room and her husband is like baby you are so fine um i'm paraphrasing y'all but he's saying basically I, my girl is beautiful and i want to show her to all the kings and the princes out here you know what i mean and rightfully so i feel like because when you go somewhere um i don't know about y'all but for me being married i'd be so proud to have my husband on my arm and i feel like i know that he feels the same way because he even tells me that and he asked her he asked um some of his servants to go and get her from out of her room and so when they do this she actually tells him no she's like not even i'm not coming right now i'll be down in a little bit baby um she just says absolutely not you know what i'm saying like i'm not coming like she just ain't got time for it so when the servants come down and they're like she said no you know what i'm saying which is risky business because he is the big king so even when you're relaying a message and some of y'all probably understand this even when you were laying a message the person might get mad at you uh so um basically she's just like i'm not coming down and he's like tell her basically to come on down i want to he wants them to uh people to meet her he wants the kings to see how beautiful she is all of that so nothing too tough kind of like if you were having a party you want to just stay in your room if it's a party that you guys are having at your house you want to go down there mingle um be there uh, you know, be of service to your husband. You're not even just of service, but entertain and have a wonderful time. You know, that's your man or that's your wife. You know, you want to be there. So basically, she just is like, once he realizes that she's not coming down, he is furious, you guys. And he's like, you know, dang, like she really ain't gonna come down here. And it's not only, now mind y'all. So, <sighs> okay, so when the servants i think they call them eunuchs or something like that i don't think i don't know if that's exactly what they are but basically they're like advisors to the king and so they hear what's going on and they see the anger of the big king we can call him the big king in, in short and they're like yo yo you can't be letting her tell you no because what will the wives think? The other wives of the other kings and princes are going to be like, uh, excuse me. They're going to be like, um, I ain't coming to you. I'm not going to do what you said because guess what? The big queen, Venetia didn't do what, um, the big king said. And so I'm not coming to you and I'm not going to do what you said do anyway. So they're like, this is going to cause an uproar. And so initially I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, now. Is this just because y'all, you know, y'all want to make a big deal and an example out of her because, you know, she not doing what y'all wanted to do? Because we women understand, like, over the times, there have been uh, levels of control that have put, been put on women. But once I kind of understand the times, it's not only that she didn't listen to her husband, she just didn't listen to the king. And people that don't listen to the king get killed, you know what I'm saying? So this is a big deal because it's not only just like, oh, this is your husband, but this is the big king. And you are just saying, absolutely not. And not only that, but he is your husband. And you would think that, okay, baby, let me come, let me come see what my man wants. Yada, yada, yada. So, y'all i'm a you i'm using this setting spray and it's because it's super moisturizing i don't know oh i got this in a boxy charm back in uh it was an add-on but y'all know i don't subscribe to them at all too many mishaps y'all but you know god is good you keep on moving so basically they tell him like you need to do something about her because if people find out that she is not listening to you and they don't think they could do anything. You know what I'm saying? What would the other wives say? So they basically saying like, you, this about to start a trend that you don't want. So <laughs> I'm laughing because it sounds a little dramatic to me, but you know, what the hell, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes, I don't know. I ain't gonna, uh, I ain't gonna say my personal opinion. I'm just telling the story. Okay, so she's up there and he is furious. So he, they convince him, now the party's over everything, and they convince him, they say, look, um, we think you need to go ahead and get you a new wife, because that one right there, she do not know how to 
act. You know what I'm saying? She's not going to listen to you. You need to go ahead and get a new wife. And not only did he, he still had other wives, but this was the queen. You know what I'm saying? So he's being advised that you need to go ahead and find you a new sweet thing. So basically what they do is they do what's like a pageant and they're like we want to um find uh the fairest virgin of them all and we're gonna that's gonna be the king's new wife so they do a pageant and they are looking for beautiful virgins that will now become the new the king's wife not even just oh she's not gonna be the new queen specifically that's not what they said but they were like oh we trying to get her out the door the old queen no so basically so basically um they tell everybody they say hey anybody who basically feels like they have a daughter or know a version that would be amazing for the king, go ahead and submit her. You know what I'm saying? Submit her to see um, if, you know, he would want her to be his wife. Now, this was no small thing. And you got to think about it because, okay, so basically what's done is these women, these women are gathered but not only that but they are going under a process which is called beautification i think that's the way that they um they mentioned it in the bible and it's basically them getting in prime uh prime condition to be uh suitable for the king mm, i feel like that just took all my i did just watch this so maybe let me see a little bit more so um, and they, okay. and they do this typically at the women's house. So the women's house is a area where they teach women or, um, it's the house of women that teach women certain etiquette. How do you treat a husband? What do you do? Um, you know, cause these are things, these are young girls and they don't know anything. You know, they're just, I mean, imagine just telling a teenager, because, you know, they were young. They were young girls. They're, they were still virgin telling the teenager, okay, now you're going to go ahead and be a wife. Now, in today's time, that's cool because, you know, there's no thing. Not even cool. No, it's really not cool here. <laughs> I, I don't know why I said that. But there's not as many uh, expectations nowadays, I feel like. Um, you know, because marriage is kind of what you make it. And I think that that has been more suitable. But during that time, these women had to go undergo beautification. And they went through this in the, um, the women's house. So there's a man and his name is called Mordecai. Now, if you guys have heard of him, I mean, I'm sure you have, cause I always heard of him, but I, I don't think I fully understood who he was, but the story of, uh, the book of Esther really talks about exactly who he is. So, uh, Esther is to Mordecai is Mordecai's uncle is Esther's father but he's actually deceased and so is her mother. So she, technically she's an orphan. So both of her parents are deceased and Mordecai took her in as his own daughter. He watched after her, he took good care of her, loved her the way that she's supposed to. And so when he hears about the fact that the king is looking for a wife, he's like, I have this beautiful girl at home. Like she, you know, being a wonderful, um, you know, father figure, she's like, oh, I, I want her to have the best because think about it. I know that it kind of sounds weird now to like petition your daughter to be with this this man, but she's gonna have a wonderful life. Um, and for the most part, we don't, we don't really know. I mean, she's gonna have to get married anyway back in those days. So why wouldn't it be, why wouldn't you try to put your kids in the best position as possible? So I kind of feel like that may have been the thought process that Mordecai had. And so I was okay. I, I kind of felt like, oh, you know, that's really sweet. And he even, I think you can really see the love that he has for her because he takes her to the woman's house. And every day um, during the beautification process, he goes outside the woman's house and he's like, hey, how's she doing? How did she do today? Just making sure she's on the right track so that um, 
just to make sure she has a good chance and she's really learning what she, she you know he feels like she should be learning or you know doing a good job so i think that is also in and not in a way that he would actually benefit from her you know being a king because i kind of thought about that like you know there's people that love you but they like oh you should be that so i could you know put me in a better position but that wasn't the thought process of mordecai he really just wanted what was best for her and you could tell that from the story and so i thought that that was super um beautiful so basically she goes through all of her beautification and she actually undergoes this for a year i think they said and i was was it a year i can't i, I want to say a year but forgive me if i'm wrong i'm filming yes <laughs> And then, all right so i think they said she underwent um a beautification process for a year and i'm thinking to myself a year a year but you know what teaching new things learning new habits everything um taking care of your body kind of like what you do when you're you want to be the best for your man you make sure everything's cleaned up you put your hair together, you make sure your hair is done, you make sure everything's trimmed, you make sure your body feel good, smooth, nice, exfoliate, so hydra you know, um, hydrating that skin, extra moisture, you know, so, I mean, you really should be doing that on a regular basis anyway, but, you know, you do a little bit extra for the man of your dreams, so, in my mind, this is what she's doing, so, all of these virgins get, um, uh, put it before the king, the big king. And um, so they are basically like, oh my God, they think that Esther is so beautiful and so much so that he actually calls her by name, y'all. I mean, could y'all imagine that? Being in a room full of beautiful uh, women and the man of your dreams or the man that you want to be calls you by your name. It's like, baby, I want you. I want you. So he chooses her, right? And she becomes his wife. So one of the main things that uh, the king actually loved the most about her was because she was so easy to please. Um, so I think the word that the way that they mentioned was um, everything that he gave her, she didn't ask for more than what he gave. Uh, and I think that that is such a big lesson in being appreciative. Um, not that you have to be okay with anything anybody gives you, but the fact that she was just like, oh, wow, you know, recognizing what someone does for you. And I think that, um, for me, that's a big deal. Um, uh, and be, just being appreciative. So that was one of the qualities that he loved about her. Okay. So basically he's just so in love with Ruth. Now keep in mind, she's still one of the many wives that he has, but he, falls in love with her so much so. Woo. So he falls in love with her so much so that he actually makes her queen. And so basically they just throw Venetia out on the streets. They like, baby, you got to go. You know what I'm saying? There's no more really like talk about her. They decrown her. She has to go. Esther becomes queen. So That, that part is just flipping me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do one thing wrong and he gonna throw you out on the street. You know what I'm saying? It's not funny, but the audacity. You know, but he's the king, so. But y'all, y'all wise, y'all will. Okay. <laughs> so, um, he loves her so much. And, you know, so um, there is basically um another banquet that happens right not banquet but like i guess party um where they are celebrating so there's a man and his name is Haman. and um during this party there is you know the king basically says oh man you know like you've been doing a great job and he wants to celebrate Haman. and not only does he want to celebrate him but he actually makes him um a king with uh, other princes and kings under him. Um, I don't know if he was like right underneath the king, but I, it kind of positioned him that way. Like he may have been right underneath the big king, the one that um, Esther is married to. So, um, 
they are like, oh my gosh, so not, not only is, you know, does he have like this high rank now, but he's doing a whole lot better. You know, he, you know, has all the things that the king promised to him and he's really feeling himself. So during this process, um, So during this process, they um, they basically bow to the person who's being like crowned, right? And during this time, everybody bows and Mo uh, Mordecai is actually in the party, but he does not bow. And at first I'm like, dang, I'm kind of like, you know, if this is the custom, why you, why you ain't, you know, what you doing? You know, you being a little prideful, you know what I'm saying? You hate and what, what's going on? So, no, it's none of that. So, in reading, I was, like, reading the story. So, um, the, I guess it's the servants or something like that. But, basically, they asked Mordecai, not in front of everybody, but they just kind of pulled him to the side on some, why you didn't bow when Haman was, um, was basically being initiated or whatever. Um, or, you know, when he became king to like basically show solidarity or, you know, be thankful of what, what was going on. And so Mordecai says, I don't bow to nobody. I am a Jew. And the only one I bow to is God. So basically what it is, is if you bow, you are like submitting yourself to them. And then when I read it like that, I was like, oh, I understand. You know what I'm saying? Because. I mean, in theory, you would think like, oh, okay, you know, it's just the custom. But he's like, you know, there's just certain uh, things that, you know, Jews do not do. And y'all, when I tell y'all, this lit a fire under Haman. And Haman, Haman was, let me make sure I'm saying Mordecai and not Malachi, okay? If I say that, I'm so sorry. But I know somebody named Malachi, but it's Mordecai. So, uh, so uh, Haman is so upset i mean he is like the audacity you better bow to me you know what i'm saying like look you done got a little bit of authority and here you go try to tell this man he gonna bow to you i say that i say this come on now so he basically like absolutely not <laughs> i'm not i'm not bowing to you um i serve a god uh, the god the the alpha and the omega and we don't do that around here okay we don't do that so basically this makes Haman so mad to the point to where he leaves and he um goes and he tells his family and his wife and he's like yeah I can't stand Mordecai but get get this right so Mordecai and Haman kind of have a backstory which I don't really want to get too deep in because I need to read that backstory. But it's not even just them particularly. It's the fact that um, Mordecai is a Jew. So I think somebody that Haman uh, knew or like maybe another king or something like that, he was like killed um, because of a Jew or by Jews or something like that. And I'm not 100% sure. I got to do some research, research on that. And when I find out, I will let y'all know. But, so, he already has, like, a prejustice against Jews anyway. So, he just, the fact that Mordecai is not bowing to him, he is on one. And, um, so, he tells his wife, he's, like, basically, his wife and I think some of his family members, he's, like, you know, he's going to create a plan and he's going to basically, um, get the Jews killed because he wants Mordecai killed. Actually, the Bible specifically says Haman was so um like angered, he wanted to quote unquote lay hands on Mordecai. And let me tell you something. Ain't much changed, right? And I say that because everybody likes to say that the Bible you know what I'm saying it's like it's not easy to relate to in current times but he was so mad at him he wanted to lay them hands you know what I'm saying I was gonna say holy hands because you know I'd be joking like that you know make, make me want to lay them holy hands on you but 
honestly, like not much has changed because in everyday um, circumstances, people be wanting to lay hands on people because they don't do what they want them to do. So to hear that, it was very humorous to me. And um, we need to be stop being so prideful, y'all. I'm telling you, because it will be the downfall of you. And I say that not only to y'all, but to myself too. So uh, Heyman devises this whole plan. And basically he's like, you know what? I'm going to kill Malachi. Mordecai. See, I caught myself. I'm going to kill Mordecai. And so he devises this whole plan. And basically he's going to go to the king. And this is actually what he does. So he goes to the king and he says, look, listen. There's some people out here that they don't go against, they don't go uh, with your rules. They think they basically above your rules, right? And so, you know, they don't want to bow. You know, not even specifically they don't want to bow, but the rules that you have uh, in effect right now, they don't, <laughs> they're not going, they're not going to um, follow them. And you know what I think we should do? We should kill them. Slaughter every last Jew. All of them. And I said, the audacity. Y'all, I'm reading this. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the audacity. You want a whole group of people killed where there would literally be not one Jew as we know it today. You know what I'm saying? Not only say just adopt the faith, but you know what I'm saying? Like obliterate all the Jews. And I was like, this dude is on one. Like he is crazy. So he goes to the king and the king is thinking like, dang, you know, somebody don't want to listen to my law back, back again. Same thing like with his wife. Now, I, it was personal because it was his wife. But, you know, whatever the king say, he's basically saying like, you got to you got to listen to me and I can't get nobody no slack. So basically what he does is he ag agrees to go along with Haman's plan and he actually puts out a decree. And a decree is it has to happen, you know? So he sends letters to every kingdom from India to um, Ethiopia. You know, all his 127 provinces is basically saying like, this is the order the Jews will be killed and they will be killed on this day. Now get this y'all. So the day that all the Jews are supposed to be killed is on thir the 13th of the month. And so, like what you know what i'm saying like come on like you know i'm sorry thinking about all the superstitions behind friday the 13th and that's actually where it comes from that is the original superstition behind friday the 13th but once you hear the rest of this story it kind of don't make sense why you know what i'm saying people would be so up in arms because you know god is good and so Basically, he's like, yeah, on the 13th of this month, uh, we're going to kill all the Jews. You know what I'm saying? Not we, him, you know, them, the assassins that they, they hired. And he even goes as far to say he will pay um, 10,000 pieces of silver. And I said, let me tell you something. There's some evil people in this world. You heard me. Um, not even just in this world that, that would do some crazy stuff because to pay a hefty payment like that, just because you ain't like that a man bow, uh, didn't bow to you, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy, you guys. Like, that's, he's wild. So, Because I, look, you think I'll pay anything for my enemies? <laughs> not not to do nothing to hurt them, you know what I'm saying? Because it's really going to hurt me because, you know, God. So, I'm just like, yo, like, you're, you're wilding. So, Basically, he does that. The decree goes out. Everything is in motion. The plan is in motion. Now, behind the king's back, uh, Mordecai, not Mordecai, Haman is actually building um, this structure to be able to hang Mordecai because he got some plans, basically, to harm Mordecai. So, he has this all in his mind. So, they have another banquet, right? So... Mordecai actually finds out what Haman has planned. I don't even know. No, he just hears about the decree, right? Now, keep in mind, nobody knows that Esther is um, Jewish because, I mean, she's the family of Mordecai, right? So she's she, her parents are Jewish. Mordecai, is Jew, that's how she was raised. So this decree... Um, affects the wife but nobody knows you know what i'm saying so 
Um, Mordecai here finds out about this and he's basically like, he falls down. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the Bible even talks about how he changed his clothes. He went and put on sacks. Um, yeah, the Bible even talks about how he went to and he actually put on uh, sacks. He took off his good clothes and I'm good clothes. You, <laughs> you know, your mama said don't play in your good clothes. But um, takes off his, uh, you know, his traditional garments and he puts on sacks. And when all of the other Jews find out, they do the same thing. So the Jews do this, but keep in mind, you know, they're still on their faith, you know? So when they find this out, let me tell y'all, the Jews, guess how they responded? I'm thinking they going just, I don't know, maybe get mad, decide they gonna fight back or just give up in entirety. But let me tell you, or run, you know what I'm saying? First thing I thought they was gonna do is, you know, try to run as far as they could to get get out of the whatever so get out of uh, the 127 providences so they can live or something you know what the bible says that the jews do when they find out they do change their clothes um and they put on sex but they fast and they pray y'all if that ain't a life lesson right there when a decree has been put out that it is it is final for your life to end and you still go to God, you don't run, you don't move, you don't take anything in your own hands, you fast and you pray. That was a, that, that was a major lesson that God put into my heart. Fast and pray, because ain't nothing stronger than the prayer, praying to God, and fasting. My clarity, understanding what you're supposed to be doing. So basically, all this goes down. And Mordecai goes to Esther and he's like telling her what's going on and Esther is like trying to figure out what she's going to do right because she can't just go to she can't just go up to the king and be like please don't kill my people by the way I'm Jewish and and she she could risk her life you know what I'm saying because the decree is out she doesn't know how it is most importantly she can't even go and talk to the king until his staff has been put out and ready for her to actually he calls on her she doesn't call on him so it's risky business business either way you know so she talks to mordecai and she's basically like you know what please ask he she asked for mordecai and, and the other jews to pray and fast for three days resisting food and drink um and to fast for her and so i was like wow you know what i'm saying i love that and, and that even goes to show, you know, sometimes you may not have the strength within yourself to do something, but it's important to have people of faith behind you and around you so that they can help and be your intercessors and pray with you, for you, and even fast, you know what I'm saying? Because the prayers, prayer works, you know what I'm saying? So even when you don't have the strength to pray for yourself, you still should, but having the right people around you that want to see you prosper, it definitely matters. And it's actually, actually really, really matters in this case. So Esther decided, you know, she's just going to go to the king either way. You know what I'm saying? She's she going to take the chance to talk to him without him calling on her. Um, and she's just going to go ahead and tell him um, what's going on in, in her exact words. If she perishes, she perishes. And that is, that's what I was talking about, the strength of a woman, the strength of um, Esther, and the fact that she decided, you know, she's not going to uh, abandon her people, and she's going to do what she knows that God would have her to do, and risking death in it all for her. So she basically goes to the king, and she's humbling herself, you know, not even just humbling herself, but she's like, if the king, you know, believes that it's okay, I would like to throw a, a dinner for you um, and make sure Haman is there. And he's just basically like, you know, I think that'll be nice. You know what I'm saying? So, and he's basically saying like, you know, whatever, submit your petitions and whatever you ask, it will be done. So she doesn't talk to him just then, you know, sometimes you got to butter your man up. So they, they, you know, are at the, the um, banquet. Oh, okay. Try to think about which one I'm going in first. I think I'm going to go in with this. This is going to be my crease color. And this is fully baked. Yo, look at this. 
that space color is so cute. Look at that. I just, a little piece. A little, just, just literally. You can't even tell really that I touched it. The smallest little. So, so they're at the banquet. And, you know, they're having this party and having a wonderful time. And the king is basically like, he knows. And is so darling because throughout this process, he's so loving, so kind, and so understanding. And it just speaks on being able to have the right man um, and being blessed with the right person to, to love you, care for you, protect you, and all of that. That's another. Okay. So, basically... Um, they're having a good time at this party and the king has not uh, forgotten that basically um, the queen, Esther, actually has something that she wants to talk to him about. So um, basically the king actually finds out that um, Mordecai that Mordecai um, has saved his life. So two of his eunuchs were actually uh, planning to kill him. The Bible speaks of them laying, to lay hands on the king, but basically they were planning to, to kill him, hurt him, you know, whatever it is they had planned. And Mordecai actually notified, um, not specifically the king, but the king's servants of what they uh, had planned. And that's actually what saved the king's life. But the king did not know of that until I think, I don't know if somebody told him or he was reading in a book, like some of the things, I don't know. They kept good record of, you know, certain things. So when he found this out, he was so pleased with Mordecai. And, you know, I guess he kind of had been seeing him around, but didn't know that he specifically had, you know, saved his life or anything. So um, during this time, Haman comes. So Haman's at the party because she specifically asked for Haman to be there. Um, um, for reasons unknown to him, you know what I'm saying? So, keep in mind that Haman still has this uh, conniving plot to kill Mordecai, and it's actually built um, of this contraption or whatever they call it um, to hang him on. And he's basically gonna plot to do this and I guess get permission from the king uh, to um, to kill Mordecai and have him hung. And like, I think it was like a public area or something like that. So the king finds out what Mordecai had uh, done and the fact that he really saved his life. And so when he finds this out, he's really pondering on it. He's like, wow, you know, Mordecai is such a good guy. And he asked his servants, you know, how did we reward him? And the servants are like, we reward him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's nothing that's been done for him. So he asked, uh, which it would be his right hand man, which is Haman. You know, what would what would you do to do for someone who, you know, how would you? He's just thinking of great ideas, and he's asking his uh, his partner, you know, not partner specifically, but he's asking Haman, you know, what would you have have? What would you have done for someone who, uh, you know, to exalt them? And so Haman is all about himself, and he's just like, you know what? <laughs> I would, you know, put do all this extra stuff for him. You know what I'm saying? I would have this done. I would have that done. Yada, yada, yada. Because he's saying all the stuff that he wants, right? Unbeknownst to him, he's actually asking him uh, uh, about something that he wants, he's going to do for uh, Mordecai. So when this is done and he actually gives everything to Mordecai and exalts Mordecai and he's happy and everything y'all this angers uh Haman for real and so he basically goes back to his uh I think he goes back to he talks to his family again and he's like yo look listen I'm about to do this man Mordecai in because I'm so sick and tired of him. But his wife warns him. He was she was basically like, if you go up against that Jew uh, that you know the king has favored, you know it's not gonna look good for you. You know, but he do it anyway. And so basically, um, the king asks. He says, ask the queen, and he's like, you know. 
what what did you bring me here for? You know what I'm saying? Like, why did you want to have this banquet? And so after some time has kind of passed, she tells him, she's like, look, listen, there is a decree and a plan for the Jews to be killed. And those are my people. And Haman is the one who, you know, puts you up to that. And if that goes through, she's a Jewish woman and she would face that as well. And she basically kind of um, explains the whole plot that Haman had. Uh, and this angers the king because now he knows that he's been used by Haman to cause harm not only to uh, Jews um, wrongfully, but basically he's angry because he knows that um, Haman put this, you know, battery in his back and got him to... He she okay, so she reveals everything that Haman had planned. And so the king is so mad. So mad in fact that he actually has Haman killed um and actually hung in the place that he has set up for Mordecai. And that within itself did it for me. I was like, what? Like in the same so you know, my grandmother used to always say something not created plots for other people because she always said that ditch that you dig for someone else is the ditch that you will fall in yourself and I understood it when she said it back then but this story is a whole example of that so the king's wrath then turned on Haman and he was killed and the king sent out another um decree basically allowing basically allowing the Jews to be able to defend themselves against the assassins that were put in place to kill them and their family. During this time, um, you know, he's happy with Mordecai and, you know, the plan is basically for them to basically make sure that the Jews are not killed, you know? So that's not what the king wants anymore. And so he basically tells the Jews, do whatever you need to do to defend yourself and defend your family. And so that's what they do. So the Jews um, go out and they kill the assassins that were there to kill them. Not only that, but they kill Haman's sons. Mind you, he had 10 sons. So um, they kill Haman's family, all of Haman's family, uh, specifically his sons, though. And after that, um, Mordecai was actually put in charge. He was given the house of Haman. So, you know, he had just, Haman hadn't been in charge for that long. You know, he had just been given that, um, you know, the favor of the king and basically saying like, oh, okay, you know, you can... You can do this, you can do that, you're over people, you know, at the last banquet. So now he loses all of that and the man that he plotted against to have killed and Jews and everybody was like that man because he was upset that he wouldn't bow to him and didn't respect his religion, now is uh, in control of his whole entire house, you guys. So then, okay, so one other thing that when the Jews were... Um, Killing the people that basically were uh, said to come up against them. They, the uh, the king said that not only could he kill them, could the Jews kill them, but he could, they could have the spoils. So everything they owned, whatever jewelry, gold, um, all their wealth that of the people that were coming after them, he could ha they could have. Mordecai is over the house of Haman. And Haman and his 10 sons are dead. The Jews were not killed. They actually killed everyone that rose up against them. And after that, um, so the days that they were set to be able to kill um, their, you know, oppressors, like the people that were coming to kill them was, I think it was the 13th and the 15th. It was the, I think it was the 14th uh, month. And y'all, 
that day to this day is called the is it perium perium day i think it's called um you know if you're jewish please list the right day but it's basically um a day to be celebrated because it's the day that uh you know of course they they won you know they weren't killed and they made it to the 14th so y'all this story was over the top and i think that the book of esther may be the book that they talk the most about mordecai so yeah y'all i'm not even done with my makeup but i just want to know what y'all think about this story i absolutely loved it i loved how when you know they say the tide of the battle changed i loved how um Haman put his foot in his mouth i loved how uh, he fought it and did all of this stuff all for it to backfire and it hurt him not only him and his kids you know i don't wish that anything on his kids i'm assuming his kids are grown though but you know it's sad that you know it affected his whole entire house because you know they could they could have been like that you know they may not have even had anything to do with it but at the end of the day that's your daddy so that color that i was going into was uh cherry on top and so now i'm about to go into cake layer a layer cake so one of the things that I forgot to mention was how uh, at the end of the story, there were a mass amount of people converting over to become Jews because after seeing the power of God, they were afraid of the Jews. And this created um, a desire to want to know God and serve God um, in a new way. So I think that that is also a wonderful component of this story. Let me know what you think about this story. I do have some final ups if you want to um, stay to the end and um, hear like, you know, my last thoughts after I've complete this makeup. Um, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. So tell me what y'all think about this. Well, y'all had like when y'all listen to this story, what were some of the key points that stood out to y'all? So for me, there were so many. One, it is... You know, a lot of times we fight and we fight um, the battle using so many other tools than the tools that God gave us. Gave us. You know, what, where would the Jewish people be right now if they didn't fast and pray? You know, I think that their obedience and the fact that they were strong in the fact that they don't serve other people. The fact that Mordecai said, you know, he wasn't going to bow to Haman. Because keep in mind, you know, he could have bowed and... You know, it, it would not have been, it may not have been all of this. But at the end of the day, God always shows up and shows out. And that's one of the things that I love the most about this story. There's so many ways, you know how they say that nothing is ironic or, you know, what well, is ironic, but nothing is a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that um, Haman decided to come up against the Jews. And it's not a coincidence that you know, he already had um, issues with Jew Jewish people. And then he came up against Mordecai. And then, you know, it's really ironic that, you know, everything that he was doing, and he, you know, just had so much pride over, which was, you know, his house and the fact that he wanted Mor Mordecai to bow to him and all that ended up get going to the very man that, you know what I'm saying? You didn't appreciate. You know, you were acting a fool. So I just feel like that was amazing. And I think that even more so the fact that they did not, you know, he did not know that um that Esther was Mordecai's um niece. Or what is it? Niece? That would be his cousin, because it's his uncle's. Yeah, that's his cousin. So, but basically, like, that's her father figure. You know, he loved her and took her in and everything. And I just think that the way that everything really played out is something else. And I'm telling you, that's the work of God for sure. And I feel like that's a lesson for everybody. When you attempt to get with, you know, big and bad and get within yourself, just, you know, be humble and understand, you know, that God is ultimately in control. And nothing that you have 
um, is worth, you know, because he would have been okay. He would have been okay. You know, what's one person that don't bow to you when, when everybody else in the room did? Uh, he didn't want to act right. He didn't want to act right. All right, y'all. So I am done. And I'm in love with this palette. So this is definitely a fall look and I'm in love with it but yeah y'all so what did y'all think about the story leave me your details in the um the comments like this video don't forget to subscribe because this is a series so I'm definitely gonna have so much more content coming if you have a story that is your favorite story and you want me to do next excuse me please leave that in the comments and yeah y'all so i feel like a, there's so many takeaways in this story right but um wisdom yo i feel like you always get more with sugar than you do salt so keep that in mind the next time you face an adverse situation um sometimes i think it can be in human nature to do things by force but I feel like Esther was the ultimate, uh, I don't want to say finesse because she didn't finesse, but she had a level of grace and um, yeah, so she handled that. And I think also that that is another uh, take that we can all use, you know, as husbands and wives, the way that they interacted with each other and the trust and um, the love, so. Yeah, y'all, I'm going to be adding 3,000. Again, if you like this look, regardless of whether you like it or not, please go pick up another Cake Face. Um, again, her name is Time the Infamous, and I think the website is just cakefacecosmetics.com, and it comes all together in that PR package, and it's super beautiful, you guys. Uh, pigment is there, and I feel like this is going to be definitely my go-to's if you know time the infamous for sure these colors right here are so her i mean everything is so her but i just remember these beautiful bright pink looks and of course i mentioned this uh color too so yeah y'all i love y'all and um thank you for hanging out for the bible story we'll be back next week